This show was underwritten by the Avis and Bruce Richards Family Foundation. Hi, I'm Stacy Griffith, and Lunch NYC's episode today is all about New York City's parks and what it has to offer absolutely free. One of the greatest green things about this city is its parks. And today, we're going to take an in-depth look at all the things that New York City's parks have to offer absolutely free. So put on your sneakers, leave the office, let's take a little stroll in your neighborhood and see what New York City has to offer in its greenest feature, its parks. So come on. New York City parks are a great place for individual exercise and recreation, but they're also home to a variety of organized sports and activities. Throughout the spring and summer, and even into the winter, there are many events and games to check out. Stop by Bryant Park, where sports like yoga, petanque, and ping pong are practiced on a regular basis. Yeah, we've had a club in this city for 40 years now. It's fairly simple. You can learn this game in five minutes, but it could take you a whole lifetime to be really good at it. <laughs> it's totally free. Bryant Park is uh, providing that as a service to uh, customers in the park. You know, you get to know the people here, and I know about 40 or 50 people who play here on a regular basis, which is kind of neat. Everybody that comes and play during the lunch hour, and some of them even come back uh, after their work day is over. They come back and play an hour or two before they go home. It's just a lot of fun, an hour out of the middle of the day just to uh, take a break, do a little bit of juggling. In Central Park, you can do everything from baseball, softball, and soccer. Head up to Van Cortlandt Park in the Bronx, which is outfitted with cricket fields, a fishing lake, and not one but two golf courses. Any sport or game you can think of, chances are it's played here in one of the parks even sports that New Yorkers make up themselves. This is Circle Rules Football, and this is the New York City Championship match uh, for the Circle Rules Federation. Circle Rules Football is a new sport that I invented with the help of the players about four years ago, and uh, it's played on a circular field with one goal in the center. One team scores through one way, one team scores through the other way. It's played with a big yoga ball. You can touch it with any part of your body, so you're using soccer skills, basketball skills, volleyball skills, and for the goalies, they have full contact with each other, so they're also using wrestling skills in addition to all those things. Instead of a throw-in like you do in soccer, we do something called the double kick, where you drop the ball and you have to kick with two feet at the same time. It's a game that a lot of artists have taken on as their special sports activity. So even if you're not like an athletic person or you don't think of yourself as an athlete, you can start playing this game and jump right into it and get a good grip on it and have fun. Never seen a sport played that way before, it's so cool. Anybody who wants to come in can play. We have children playing, we have people who are playing against their first time against people who have been playing for four years. You didn't have to be a certain age to play it. You could be young, old, and play together on the same game. I root for one team, but I always meet people from the other team. And we're so, there's so much camaraderie between teams, even though it's, because it's so small still, so I, I feel like there's very much like a community within it. The motto is keep it Sunday, right? So it's a family kind of event. We're working on developing the league and promoting the sport around the world in schools and colleges and, and at festivals and, you know, recreational teams all around the world. There's a group that plays in Toronto, D.C., Jacksonville, in Orlando, Bristol, in London. Uh, but they may just be Bristolers who are visiting London. I don't know. It's not clear. We're also interested in promoting sports invention as a type of curriculum, so teaching kids how to make their own sports. There's a lot of kind of strategy and critical thinking that goes involved in that, so how do you add invention and creativity into PE? And that's, that's something we're working on. I see everyone enjoying it, and people who've just come out to play it come back and say, we'll play it again. Whether it's played by millions or just you and your friends, you can bet your favorite sport is happening somewhere in the city. Check out your local park's website for more information. Running around at the playground is an excellent way for kids to have fun and to get some exercise. 
but you want to make sure to keep their energy levels up. So don't leave your house without a bottle of water and a zip top bag with about a quarter of a cup of your child's favorite dried fruits and nuts. Protein is important also. Organic cheese is a wonderful source of protein and travels really easily as well. So be prepared, have snacks on hand, and your kids will be happy, healthy, and energized. New York's parks offer more than just recreation. They're also a great way to relax with friends and family. And what a better way to do it than a good old-fashioned picnic. Today, Lunch NYC will be taking you step-by-step step to plan a perfect NYC picnic. Let's check it out. In packing your picnic, it is important to bring the right amount of food, utensils, and equipment, but not be bogged down by a heavy weight. First, choose a sturdy bag or basket that won't be clumsy to carry preferably one that is insulated for food and reusable for future occasions. If you're bringing water or other cool beverages, wrap them in tinfoil and put them at the bottom. This will keep them cool and act as an insulator for any other perishable items. For food, small portable snack items are always a plus, easy to carry and even easier to clean up. Suntan lotion is a plus. Always have some on hand. Non-aerosol spray cans make the least mess. Also bring a hat for shade. Don't forget a fun activity like frisbee or a football, or maybe some music and reading materials. Finally, pack your blankets last. It is the first thing you'll want to grab when you unpack, and make sure it's big, comfortable, and one you don't mind getting dirty. Picking where to picnic is almost as important as deciding what to bring. A bad spot can lead to a less than enjoyable outing. Pick an area that has access to both shade and direct sun. Changes in temperatures will make you glad you have both. You want to be off the beaten path, but not too far away from drinking fountains, paths, and places to throw out your trash. Pick a location that doesn't get a lot of foot traffic. Soft grass is always nice, but it could be a good idea to have a solid rock nearby for sitting. So you've got your perfect spot. Now it's time to set up. Spread out your blanket flat and use your shoes to weigh down the corners. Be sure to put your basket in a shady area to keep your cool drinks cold. Set out your food and drinks before digging in. If your guests bring anything, make sure to ask them if they need to be served right away. Today we're having a tasty organic chicken from the Dirty Bird on 14th Street. Once everything is set up, sit back and enjoy. There's nothing like a relaxing picnic in the park. Always remember to clean up after you're done. If you keep all your food and plates organized, it'll be easy to clean up. Make sure you throw everything in the trash and leave your spot exactly as you found it. Keep our parks clean. So that's it. With so many parks to choose from, having a perfect picnic in the city is a no-brainer. Just remember to plan everything out and you and your guests will have a great time. New York City Parks and Runners Club have tons of events and races to take part in if you're interested in running. But where should you start? Any trainer will tell you that how you train is just as important as how much you train. Don't push yourself. Start small with 5Ks and other short to medium distance races. As you compete in more and more, you'll build up your endurance and be able to tackle longer distances. By avoiding overexerting yourself right off the bat, you'll ensure a healthy training schedule and be working your way up to marathons in no time. Ask any kid in New York City what their favorite place to go is, and they'll probably mention their local playground. It's a social gathering spot, a place to get exercise. And in the case of South Street Seaport's Imagination Playground, somewhere they're free to create whatever they want. Well, Imagination Playground opened in late July. It was designed by David Rockwell, and he wanted to give a playground that had loose parts in it and gave kids a chance to use their imagination, more so than the traditional playground with swings and slides. So what's really unique about this playground is that it's not a traditional playground with fixed play equipment. It's all about loose parts, open-ended space. There's a water feature over here that is uh, Bankers one side, we call it the Aqua Theater. The Aqua Theater is about creating a little stage where the kids play in water, parents can sit around on the tiered space. And the other side is anchored by the big sand pit, and there's masts and pulleys. We have a crow's nest, which is like a tugboat, steamer stack that's right here. And it's all about this sort of sculpted environment that allows the kids to go anywhere and exercise anywhere 
and they can run around and create their own uh, play space. And every day is a new day for the kids. I mean, this was a street bed in a neighborhood that didn't have a lot of playgrounds, and the, the neighborhood needed a play space. What surprised me really is that it became the beach. It's like the uh, beach, the, uh, everyone comes and spends like time at the beach. This is the whisp it's called the Whispering Fence. So it's a kind of a really engaging piece, another chance for children to interact in their environment. This is meant to be movable, so you can actually direct it and hear the sound funnel that's the different parts of the place. We have the blocks, we have the wagon. As many people as we could talk to, we talked to. And we tried to incorporate all of their ideas as ones that made sense for what we're doing. You know, for years in the 80s, New York City parks became really vandal-proof and everything had to be buckled down and vandal resistant and you didn't want anybody to take anything. So now we're sort of moving away from that and letting kids play with stuff and touch stuff and if it breaks, we'll replace it. When we finally decided that it was all about loose parts, we just tried to figure out what loose parts blocks made the most sense. So there could be ways to you know, add other pieces to this. These pieces, you get decorative pieces, you can create flowers. You know, everything becomes a possibility here. It's really more open-ended, and you usually find these constructions of two or three and uh, multiple children coming together to put it together because you have to get a friend to help you. And they make cars, they make uh, rockets, they make you know 200,000 room hotels and water parks. And you ask what they're making, it's something completely in their head. And that is the true pleasure is that you see these children making things and making things that's all to their own imagination. We would like to bring the concept of blocks and loose parts to already existing playgrounds as well. There's play associates here who really help to facilitate the play, really kind of speaks to a lot of the needs of children to play, and it really encourages them to kind of play together. It's not age specific. Older kids seem to be drawn to the parts as well. Barry and the Rockwell Group, as well as the Parks Department, are thrilled at the instant success of Imagination Playground. I think there is this need for children to have free time. That has no, there's no timetable, there's no schedule, there's no agenda. They can do anything they want. So it's, uh, we're looking as to create some other fixed type playgrounds, use the whole concept and develop it into multiple variations that it's easy for a lot of playgrounds to achieve. So we have the Magic Playground in a box. They can go to any playground and sit there for the summer and also have loose part play with Place Associates. Uh, we're also working with Kaboom to take that program across the country. And this is probably the most satisfying project I've ever worked with. And the great thing is that children come here and every day is a new day. They create their own place. It's all about their imagination. So hence the Imagination Playground. Stress is one of the leading causes of headaches. And as great as it is to live in New York City, there's always a level of stress that comes with the job. But stress-related headaches can be dealt with through some simple stress-relieving yoga stretches. Like right angle pose on the wall to stretch the back, shoulders, and legs. Viparita Karani to encourage lymph drainage and stimulate blood flow. And a chest opener to encourage calm, deep belly breathing. And remember, just because you don't have pain in your head doesn't mean you don't have stress. It's always important to take a little time out of your busy day and treat yourself to some good exercise. We've taken a look at some great examples of city parks today, but what about the future of recreation in New York? At Fresh Kills in Staten Island, the Parks and Sanitation Department are looking forward by looking to the past. Fresh Kills, a century ago, looked like that lowland over there. You see where that creek is running? It was swampy lowland. And in the 1940s, Robert Moses had a plan to basically fill in what was all marshland and grassland. People had a very different understanding of the value of wetlands. They didn't understand their very important role in the ecology. 1944, um, uh, the landfilling begins. Five years turned into 10, 10 turned into 20, 20 turned into 50, and for 50 years, all of New York City's household garbage came to this site. It was a convenient place on a very desolate uh, part of a borough where you could put 
waste and uh, get it out of, out of the way. The landfill was closed uh, in 2001, it was reopened briefly to accept the materials from uh, the events of September 11th, uh, and then closed finally. And going back at a, as a dump on Staten Island, um, there was a blight on, on, the, on the island itself. At that time, the Municipal Arts Society said to then Mayor Rudy Giuliani, um, you know, this is the last time that the city is going to get this much land all at once, and you should make a plan. The city went ahead with the master planning process. It was funded in part by the state and the city, Municipal Arts Society helped, and there was an international competition for what should be done with this place of 2,200 acres. This is a wonderful project. The fact that a landfill that used to accept thousands upon thousands of tons of waste each and every day is going to be turned into a recreational park. And that process happened from transitioning from the Giuliani administration to the Bloomberg administration. Mayor Bloomberg has been a huge supporter of this project. The Parks Department is actually taking the lead in the transformation, but since it is a landfill, it is very unique. It's not like building a ball field on a piece of you know, land that you have somewhere else. There are many, many regulatory issues and environmental issues that we have to deal with on the sanitation end. The way you build a landfill is you have alternating layers of garbage and fills and soil. There is a barrier protection layer of a couple of feet of very, very clean soil, and then on top of that is another layer of planting soil. As soon as the cover is finished, they plant native grasses, and the purpose of those plantings is to hold the soil in place. We want to make sure that there's no erosion. What everybody remembers about the dump was all the seagulls. That's all there were here. But now there are all kinds of raptors and all kinds of meadow birds. This shows you the strength and power and beauty of nature, nature able to restore itself. A facility that was once viewed as being the garbage dump is now going to be a, a place where kids can come and bicycle, run around, enjoy themselves. Our first development on South Park is going to be very focused on active recreation. We are building two soccer fields, two new baseball fields, and also a high-speed bike path. The whole uh, area of East Mound has been talked about for a golf course. Someday there'll be horseback riding here. This is bound to be a regional destination. I know there is some skepticism within the public themselves that will this be safe for our children to play on? And I can tell you, I believe it will be. But for the sanitation department, interacting with the public wasn't something they were used to. You know, the parks department is dealing pretty much with the community. What we do is make sure that what parks wants to do fits into what the laws say we can do and how we can keep the people safe in the future. We are very, very interested in, in working with the Parks Department to make sure that Fresh Kilts becomes a hallmark for urban parks. We've covered the landfill, we've returned a lot of it back to its almost natural state, and, and while we are doing a lot of this behind the scenes, people know that we're still out there. People know that we're still invested in that project, and people know that we're not going to leave that facility until it becomes a park. So this is a landfill gas wellhead, and it's one of um, three infrastructure systems, actually, that are at work on the site. Some commissioners uh, previously uh, decided that there needs to be a better way of addressing the problem that the landfill had created on Staten Island, and more modern technology was introduced. Landfills make landfill gas, most of which is methane, and they make leachate. And there are a series of pipes that suck that uh, leachate to a processing plant, which is just on the other side of, of that mound, um, where the water is separated from the solids, the water is cleaned, as garbage decomposes, it makes landfill gas, most of which is methane. And that methane is harvested via a network of pipes, and National Grid takes that gas and uses it to heat between 20 and 30,000 homes in Staten Island. The city is able to harvest approximately $11 million worth of revenue from methane gas each year. Yeah, I'm a lifelong Staten Island. I remember, I remember as a kid uh, before 
the Staten Island Mall was even built, and we used to go uh, to the farmer's market. There was a little airport on Richmond Avenue, and used to always comment as a kid how bad it smelled. Then I worked in the landfill for 15 years, and I used to say, ah, it don't smell. Now, the people on Staten Island will have a world-class park to go to. It is going to be something that's going to take a while. I mean, they'll be able to play soccer on certain areas and maybe baseball in certain areas, but for the entire thing to come to fruition, it'll take a little while, but it will be a good thing for Staten Island. If you were alive in the city of New York from 1944 to 2001, you contributed to making this place because your garbage is here. Fresh Kills, according to what we've heard, is, is one of only two man-made objects that can be viewed from space. What we hope to see at Fresh Kills, which will be the size of three central parks, is, is a place where people can come and exercise and be healthy and feel healthy and live a longer life. I'm hoping to play golf there someday. It belongs to all of us, and there is no other place in the city with vistas like this. Over the next 30 years, Fresh Kills Park will continue to grow and expand, beginning to open to the public as soon as next year. Once a dumping ground for waste, Fresh Kills takes the concept of recycling to a whole new level, providing a place where future generations can be active and enjoy the outdoors. to your local playground is a great way to get exercise and enjoy the outdoors. But always remember to talk to your kids about playing it safe. Remind them not to talk to strangers and to stay close to you before you head to the playground. You could develop a code word to let them know if someone they don't recognize approaches them, they can test to see if this is someone who's really safe. If you teach your children more about safety, you can really utilize the city's great parks and playgrounds and not have to worry so much. I'm Dylan. I'm always hungry and I'm always looking for a new restaurant in New York City. But here's the thing, it has to be healthy. Let's visit all five boroughs to find the best healthy food in New York City. I'm in Central Park, one of my favorite places to play catch. I'm gonna try to find some good, healthy restaurants in the park. Let's head over to the Ball Field Cafe. Here you can get a quick, healthy bite after a ball game. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm Dylan. Hey, I'm Mike. Nice to meet you, Dylan. Um, I just came from playing ball, and I heard there's some healthy options here. Well, there are. We have organic pizza. We have a really good chopped salad with fruit and feta. Uh, we do an excellent grilled chicken Caesar. We have lots of stuff. Well, the ball fields has been here for a while, and we serve everybody from the Broadway Baseball League, uh, locals that live on Central Park West, a lot of tourists that come for the carousel, pretty much all of New York. And are people happy with the healthier food? I think so. I mean, I think people are more aware now of healthy food. They're finding that they have local farmers markets where they live, and they bring that awareness even when they're coming to visit New York. Uh, one of the original owners, Mike O'Neill's daughter, Georgia, has an organic farm in Virginia, and she's promised me a bushel of fresh tomatoes in August. Mm. So we'll be doing a panzanella salad, I think. So could I uh, take a look around the kitchen? Yeah, come on around back. And it's a traditional Caesar dressing. The only difference is we pasteurized eggs rather than the traditional raw egg, which is a lot healthier. Yeah. Um, then we grill chicken. That's a boneless breast. It's been marinated with just a little bit of fresh rosemary and tarragon. Then it's grilled. And what we do is we just heat it. It's already been grilled, refrigerated, and we just heat it just a little bit, and it's served on top. This salad was great. It was truly a home run.
Thanks for joining us this week on Lunch NYC. Uh, today we got to see some of the more unique sports and events happening in the city. We took a look at an interactive playground with kids learning in mind. We saw how creative ingenuity can transform a former dumping area into the future of city parks, and we even had time to catch a picnic. If you'd like to take a closer look at some of the things we looked at today, you can check out these websites for more information. And while you're at it, see what's happening at a park near you. I'll see you there. Funding provided by 